Okay, time for more car. So, anyone heard about Armory before? Maybe should a question. <laughs> Damn, awesome. <coughs> Quick introduction. My name is Lubos. You may recognize me by this pixely avatar. Uh, does anyone actually recognize this game? No, not even Robert. <laughs> <laughs> from 96 okay okay it's saving that for another year I split my talk to into two par parts first one is about uh, standalone libraries for car for working with 3d graphics and the second part is about actual armory engine which is probably the what armory is known for with a uh, full blender integration for basically complete game authoring. My original motivation for starting to work on these libraries was an idea for 3D painting application where I had an there's basically no open source a application to paint 3D models for altering textures for physically based rendering. Basically what you use, you what you use for models in Unreal Engine or Un Unity. So I started searching for a solution to build this tool. I want it to be open source portable in the sense that it has to run on a web, mobile, and even virtual reality. It has to be fast, it's to fast compile times. But on top of that, I wanted an integrated user interface library, and I wanted a prepared 3D viewport experience, basically injected render in a framework with global illumination effects. And I quickly found out that there are actually not really tools to build 3D tools, where usually 3D technology is mm, glued into 3D projects like game engines, and it's hard to take that apart and build your own ap applications. Basically, I wanted something like tool engine where you can prototype a game in a day and I, I wanted something like that for tool. I wanted to build prototype a tool in a day. And the problem is even more imminent where you search today for applications for digital content creation like creating models, texturing animation or creating world. There were tons of the tools in the past but somehow there are very few today, apart from Blender. But basically, there's thankfully there is Blender, but there is no nothing else available, which I found quite odd. Even so, that today the GPUs are insanely powerful, and there's basically not many tools to take advantage of it. And then. Four years ago, I stumbled upon Ka, which basically gives you this power to build 3D in engines very comfortably. So I started to work on a solution on this problem. The first one was a library, local library called Iron, which basically handles the rendering system scene format and my presentation is outdated sorry
Okay. Okay, much better. Yeah, basically there are no actual shaders, but it is material system for communication from CPU to GPU. It handles animation. It has specialized scene format. Mm, both text format is supported when you need debugging, but for actual publishing, you can use binaries. And then on, to on top of this library, is build armory, which is an actual game engine integrated in Blender. It has shaders, render paths, so it's, it's not tied to, for example, forward rendering or deferred rendering. Then some more libraries on top of that is Huxballet, which is basically bindings through HHCPP to the C++ library Ballet 3D physics. And it also works through JavaScript, where the C++ Ballet sources are compiled to JavaScript through Enscripten or to WebAssembly, hopefully soon. So it works bo both in C++ and JavaScript. And from Hux perspective, you, you don't know the difference. You just deploy to the target and that's it. And similar to that works Hux Recast, which is for 3D navigation, pathfinding, or, or in 3D space. Then finally, I needed a user interface library, but specialized for tooling. So there's stuff like uh, node graphs, color pickers, file browsers, and uh, easy 3D integrations, soon uh, easy copy-paste. It's an uh, immediate mode user interface, so basically there's no, no, no state retained. If you want to show a button, it's just a disk call. If you want to disable button, just comment this line, and it's gone. And this is the first result, is a user interface editor, which is actually used in Armory. There's a canvas, you can drag and drop images from operating system, uh, move it around, find colors, some properties, some events, which are then accessed from inside the engine, where so for example, the, when the button is clicked, so you can get uh, notified inside, inside the game. And building on top of that, this was my first kind of a 3D template for prototyping 3D tools, which I originally wanted. We have a prepared 3D viewport and uh, integrated user interface. Then uh, building on top of that, it's easy to throw user interface into 3D space where a point o on screen, for example, mouse click, is projected into the 3D plane, and it just works. Next up, I want some tool for editing logic. So for Armory, you can Mm, basically embed these examples right in the documentation. And as you edit the node graph, uh, you can see live logic preview in the 3D viewport. <coughs> and the result of that is like the standard hex code. Next up is a... Uh, Mm -hmm. Better? Yeah, <laughs> Next up is a material editor where you basically 
assemble shaders, but using nodes. And as soon as you change the connection, you can see the live preview in the viewport. And then you can either um, bake textures, or you can get a raw GLSL output out of it. And finally, my original idea was a 3D painting application where you define materials using nodes, basically for a brush. Then you take a brush, load the 3D model, and start painting. And one last tool, which I just recently started, is a, is a tool for creating procedural worlds. So what's in is uh, procedural, procedural skies, oceans, and you can defi define brushes, um, which are programmable using uh, Hux logic. So I just created quickly some grass brushes, and you can respond to the environment around, around it. <coughs> and the uh, runtime of these tools is actually meant to be Chrome. So it's fast to compile compared to something like WebGL, you get full hardware access. Uh, you can deploy to all operating systems at once, so you can build on Windows and deploy to Mac and Linux. Drag and drop file system and system commands, it's all built in. And for final publishing, you can of course use HexCPP or in the future Hashlink as well, or any other car target. So my first, first conclusion for, for this part was that Hacksky is actually perfect for tooling. And moving on to the second part, the actual Armory engine, where my motivation was to build full 3D games in Hacks, but I wanted to try something different, like not the usual editor, but uh, full Blender integration. <coughs> the first problem with this, with this approach was how do you run hacks <coughs> and ka in uh, Blender? In Blender, there are OpenGL bindings exposed through Python. So my first idea was to uh, create the ka backend, compile ka to Python and call these Python bindings, which actually worked, but it was quite slow, obviously. Another approach was embed core, which is a C++ implementation of Ka into Blender, compile it together, and then create Python bindings to core, and then compile Ka to Python and it again, it, it worked, which I was really surprised. But it was tough to keep up. As soon as you would update Ka, you would have to update all the, all the bindings. The third solution was uh, to actually embed Chromium. I used uh, CEF, Chromium Embedded Framework, into Blender and then compile Ka into HTML5 and ren render stuff through WebGL, which again again worked, surprisingly. <laughs> but you can't access mm, compute shaders or tessellation shaders, so it was kind of limited. And using WebGL itself, you automatically get like 20% uh, performance hit. And uh, the final solution to this problem was Chrome, which is basically core plus V8 runtime, which I compiled into Blender, then just Ka is compiled to JavaScript, the JavaScript is then executed, 
and uh, it runs perfectly. Yeah, and this is basically how it looks. On the left is the standard Blender interface, and on the right is uh, basically hacks injected into Blender. Obviously, there are some benefits to this approach, like everything is packed in together, so there's no trouble with exporting animations and loading in separate separate formats. There's a huge ecosystem in Blender, so you don't need to worry any any of, about of those things. Yeah. <laughs> So with your uh, skin characters, you can actually edit those actions in Blender, uh, stash them, and then in Hacks, you simply retrieve the animation object, and then uh, play action, find the name like you named it, and I it just works. There is a uh, logic node stuff where for people who are not familiar to hacks, they can start with logic nodes, and uh, then they can start inspecting the individual logic nodes. Like you can open each logic node, and uh, it's uh, just a bunch of hacks, hacks code. And then you can also write custom logic nodes. Yeah. Mm, the loading of resources is uh, fully asynchronous, which enabled me to implement open world streaming. So as the camera moves around, the object is unloaded, loaded, or you can uh, show the scene even uh, sooner than it's, than, than it's fully loaded, which is useful for uh, web targets. You can uh, split your scenes into multiple blend files, so it's easier to work with. The materials are fully node-based, where as you compose nodes, the special, like it for, for each node tree, it builds a shader. The nodes are shared with cycles, which is a mm, path tracer, so you can easily switch from rasterize and render the scene using a path tracer, so you get a kind of a ground truth of how your scene, how your scene should look. You can create procedural materials, or uh, there's a possibility to bake the node trees down into a single texture set. Yeah, like Robert talked, there is a networking in car, so you can see it in action here, running in browser. It runs on all targets where car runs, so basically full console support now. There's a basic VR renderer. It's fully physically based, so if you are familiar with the workflow of Metalligons or Specular, you can uh, import those textures and use them as they are. There's a voxel-based illumination where each frame the scene is uh, voxelized, and using this data, uh, indirect illumination can be traced for bounce lighting. You can do stuff like uh, reflection using voxels, which is otherwise a uh, quite tough effect to achieve. There's uh, experimental support for um, distance fields, which are useful for tracing soft shadows or ambient occlusion, 
and uh, I just started to work on this recently is uh, kind of a full game built in Armory. It will come as an example and uh, it's a simple s selection game where you just have to wait from point A to B but avoid the robots. A small video. Yeah. There's not much, but basically what you can see is an environment with uh, working global illumination. The robots are animated, and you can walk around the scene, and it's all uh, just the scene built in Blender. There's also Blender 2.8 coming up, which is uh, tons of new features, new improved viewport, and uh, new Armory release for this one will be out also soon. And the uh, final words is that build more 3D engines. Like, if you choose CAD, there are, uh, I prepared some examples which you can find there, and mm, we are happy to document any more topics which you would be interested. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? Yeah? Mm -hmm. oh, but uh, I'm more interested in uh, making games, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not uh, it's quite clear for me uh, what parts of, of that I, I can do with Armory. So let's say I, I want to make a mm -hmm. PvP tank game, as you showed before, so I'll need a start screen, some UI, uh, level, uh, model thing. And yeah, you start a blender, or yeah. start placing up objects, composing your scenes, then so, uh, for each... Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you can insert logic, written hacks. So uh, I will, uh, I will write my logic in some uh, ID hacks, and then I can import it in. Yes, 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 yes. For each old deck or for scene, you can uh, insert components or traits written in hacks, or you can compose logic using the lo logic nodes. Both the content creation and uh, editor. ID, uh, yes, yes. Okay. For composing scene, okay. not not for programming. And then uh, I can uh, export the scene from Blender to some format. And, uh, yes, yes. You choose your desired target. So there's a there are exporter presets, so you can define what you want, and uh, everything which works in Ka will work in Armory. So you can export to web in a single click. Yes. Can you open the, the, the Blender project just as an example so we can actually see it kind of running? Because at the moment, uh, like an example. It's quite difficult for people to see, see it in action. Mm. Okay, so this is basically an empty Blender scene. Like, this is what you get when you install Blender. I will save the scene. And uh, I need to switch to Cycle Renderer, hit P or Plain Viewport. For the first time, the compilation is going, and this is Hacks running in Blender. 
and you can yeah this time it boots much faster as when you actually don't change hex code it completely skips the compilation and just proceeds the the scene and you can move stuff around you can add monkeys <laughs> as usual and uh yeah that's basically how it works what what hmm? we're seeing right now is what you did because any kind of non understanding is this on blender or is this stuff you added uh like this oh. left this part is blender but this is car running in blender okay yes this is the game like i can switch to Browse runtime, hit play, compiles. Okay, and uh, this is what you get in browser, but. Uh huh. We can do that using. Uh, Either animation or by script or by logic nodes. Logic nodes. So I select the monkey head, I add a new hex, hex craft, script, OK. Then you can do logic nodes. I'll switch to a logic node editor, create a lo logic tree. And basically what I did was assign this empty logic node tree to the monkey head. And now we can start composing. Uh, ah, damn. What? Just adding a new action, uh, rotated object. Adding a new vector, connecting to this action. And we will rotate it by time. Hit play here. This will go super fast, I suppose. Or not at all. Ah. <laughs> we need to actually tell it uh, where to call this action. Uh, assign on each update. And now it spins super fast. So I can. Uh, Insert the mod, no mod node here. <coughs> Multiply by some value. Drag it here. Should be good. And play it. It's slower now. And. Yes, so. Yes, it's easy to make new node libraries <laughs> completely right in hacks. There's a documentation on, on that. And maybe if this button works, I'm not sure. Ah, no connection. But this should navigate you to the source of the logic node tree, and it's an easy to inspect it or edit it and create new logic node. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yes. You can compare it to that. I wonder, hmm? how do they uh, compile it in the end? Are they, like, 
compiled to tax function calls or is some declarative thing that supports the structure for runtime? Yes, mm, by default, the uh, tree is traversed into a uh, hacks source, which creates the logic nodes. But there's a kind of a runtime parser, which is slower, but it can also create the logic from JSON file calling these nodes. But by default, it's compiled into hacks code, which is then compiled further into your target. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> is this a render UI or your uh, this uh, note? Yeah. Uh, this is a standard blender UI. So oh. if I switch to material editor, these are the notes for material, basically same, but we are composing yeah. materials here. And uh, for visual programming? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Well, for the materials, I showed the slide earlier where the material editor is also running standalone. So it, it's possible, but that's for like assembling materials, but I don't know, not, nothing to do with hacks. It's basically assembling shaders, yeah, if I, I got you right. Yeah. No more, no more questions? <laughs> One more? Okay, so thank you. <laughs>